all right, this is a workshop. So unless you take all four classes, I am not sending you the recipes and a huge packet that I have. You gotta take all four classes. And then at the end of the month, I will send you something. In the meantime, I will only send you my notes. And they do not have the recipes on there, which, cause I want you to concentrate on what I'm doing. Um, but I just wanted to say that at the beginning. So those are the notes, you might wanna peruse them. As we start, should I start Rose? Yep, all right, it's, it's going on Facebook. So hello everyone, uh, my name is Rose Simpson. I'm a librarian at the New Haven Free Public Library. And we are here today with Nadine Nelson for Pan-African Kitchen Lab. So she's going to be developing recipes while we watch. So would you like to tell us a bit more about what you're doing, Nadine? Yes, yeah, so I am the chef and owner and educator of Global Local Gourmet. It's an interactive culinary education company. And I also am an all around food professional. So I do a lot of different things. And one, I have a certificate of food styling. I am not a food stylist though, so I just want to tell people that. And I'm not a photographer. The things that I do really well, and I, I can do, um, I do food styling really well, I would say, but I'm not a food stylist and I don't do it like that. I do it more to make my food look good and to make people eat with their eyes. Um, I do food photography when I've had to because as a person who sometimes writes, it's something that it's good to know how to be able to do your own food photography and your own styling. So I bring you to the process of what happens when you start a recipe from beginning to end. And hopefully today, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do the food photography because I forgot about this terrible light right here. And if you're using, if you're trying to take pictures inside with fluorescent light, you gotta turn off all the lights and there's ambient light over here. So I don't know, I have to figure out a better setup to take pictures down here. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to get to that because I wasn't able to figure that out beforehand, right? Um, this mask is coming off. I feel like I have to go wash my hands now. <laughs> is everyone able to hear the audio? Or alternate question, is anyone not anyone able to hear, hear the audio? audio? All right, you can talk to Tiffany and over there and tell her whatever she can you go over there, please. Thank you. Okay, so um can everyone hear me? Okay, great. Um you can just raise your hands. This is interactive. Can they raise their hands? They can't. Okay. Um this is interactive. So yep. the more you you talk to me, the better it's gonna be for your learning. All right, I am a trained teacher. All right, and so when you workshop something, um, it's really, I want your input to make it interesting and fun. All right, so, okay, I'm, I'm doing the prep for the recipes, which is called mise en place. And hopefully in the future, I'll usually have that done beforehand, but my assistant today wasn't here. So it is very a lot to put on, a, this is a production between the, um, Props, the lights, everything that you need. It's like a bunch of different jobs all coming together in this two hour workshop. So please, um, I have to forgive myself that it's not gonna be perfect, but it will be excellent. And um, it is what it is, because we're workshopping it. All right, so I don't know if you guys are looking at my, um, my notes. So we're gonna do a bunch of different recipes. Um, right now, I am, as I said, chopping up stuff for the recipe. So we're going to make Moroccan carrots, um, Moroccan carrot dip. We're going to make Jala Fonio. You guys know what Fonio is? Okay, you oh, can't. Yes. I'm, That's just cutting, I'm just cutting onion. 
Yeah, I'm just cutting onion. It's not that glamorous. All right, I'll show you how to easily cut another onion in a second. You guys know what phonio is? All right, so phonio is um, a super grade from West Africa and it is grown a lot in Senegal. I don't know if you guys, um, are you guys, so let's start over for right now. Um, now, what do you guys know about African food while I'm prepping, all right? Because that's gonna be helpful. What do you guys know about African food? Please talk to me. And if you don't talk to me, I'm not talking either. It is an exchange. So, so let's start off with this. All right. I am so happy to be here. The reason why I'm here is because um, I don't know who is on the call, so I don't know who I'm speaking to. So I need to find. I need to receive energy from you. All right. So We've got 18 people here. This, also, I understand. Anyone... And you don't seem they're not talking though. <laughs> Anyone, if you'd so, like to speak uh, via audio, just let me know and I can make you, I can turn on um, audio for you. All right, and there's no wrong answer. So, all right, so the reason why I'm doing this is um, because so little is known or has been studied about food from the African diaspora. And I think it's kind of important um, in order that Africa is the beginning of the world. So African food influences all food, but no one really talks about that. And so I think it's important in which to showcase food from the African diaspora to make people understand that it's more than curry chicken and jerk, even though I am Jamaican and jerk is so wonderful. All right, so, but Jamaica is not the center of Caribbean food and not the center of black food as many people want to say. So I think it's really important that people know, like Fonio, for instance, it's an alternative to quinoa, and hopefully it won't go by way of quinoa and what it has done to um, Peruvian or Bolivian farmers, like when we all love one thing. Um, so Pierre Thiem, who is a Senegalese chef and owns a restaurant called Taranga in Harlem and is an ambassador for Fonio. Can you pass me the Fonio, please? There's another bag behind it. Right, so this is what the phonio looks like. This, this is what you can get at like Whole Foods or uh, a better market. This is PR's brand, all right? And it kind of looks like um, couscous, a really small grain. It doesn't take very long to cook. And then this, if you guys are from New Haven, anyone, I buy my African products at Motherland um, uh, Market on Dixwell Avenue. And this is what it looks like at the West African market in a bigger bag and straight from somewhere in West Africa. All right, everyone who's got hand raised, I'm going to lower hands. Raise your hand again if you'd like to talk and then I'll turn on uh, allowing talking for you. Oh, this is from this is from Mali, okay. Um, Pierre's brand is really good. I love. Um, he has a jollof spiced one, and he has some other spiced ones that are really good. And I tried. I bought a couple of them, and um, the jollof is really good. I saved this one for this to do this, right? So we're going to. If you know anything about jollof rice, and. It's going to be a little chaotic because I, I don't have enough time to do things from beginning to end. So I'm going to be starting a whole bunch of things, but I think that it's good for people to see me cook like this, to see like how fast something can come together and how to be free in your cooking. All right. And I'm glad that there's no recipes because people will be like, oh my God, I don't cook by recipe usually. I am making these recipes because I have to, but most good cooks do not cook by recipe, all right? So I want you to look at the methods and the techniques more so than the measurements, because as I said, at the end of the month, 
I will give you the recipes. And if you want to find the recipes yourself, you can go online and just put Jalafonio and find your own version. It won't be as good as mine, but you can do that. All right. Hey, Dean, we have so a question. What's the name of that market in New Haven? Motherland Market. It's right um, where um, a little past New Hallville going into Hamden, right before Arch Street. Motherland All right? Market. Okay. Got that in the chat. And um, I love her. She's a really, she's from Togo and she's really funny. She always thinks when I go inside there that she's like, she knows I'm not from the continent, you know, where I am originally, but you know what I'm saying? And, and um, she always thinks that I, I have a African husband or man that I'm coming to shop for. <laughs> so I'll just say this. I did not learn how to cook all different types of, especially West, West African food because of a man. I learned how to cook it because of my West African girlfriend and their mothers that allowed me to be in their kitchen with them. Can right. I ask, uh, do you, can, so, are there places in Hartford or Bloomfield that you can get African produce? Um, I'm sure there are, I just don't know what they are. I just go do a Google search because the lady that um, from Motherland, she goes, up to Hartford to get, I know, goat, for instance. So yeah, they've got I'm sure there are, very good. Yeah, I'm sure there's some places that you can get. And if you're from the Caribbean, the motherland um, market is really good also for um, for Caribbean food. So she has Aki for like $7.50 or $8.50 the most, which is unheard of because usually Aki is around $14, which is, uh, it comes from um, Africa, the Aki food. It's a uh, the national fruit of um, the national dish of Jamaica, but we'll talk about that two weeks from now when we when we do that because there's just too much to talk about in each area of cuisine. And I apologize that I'm not doing like a more formal this at the other, but I I think that you prefer you can always find out about me and my background. Um, you can Google me, so I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to make sure that we that I give you much enough information or as much information as I I think that you can't get online. All right, so right. um, we're gonna make, I'm gonna start, first start off with um, a Kenyan, um, it's a East African bean dish. And um, it's used kidney beans, all right, and coconut beans. Um, and in East Africa, they use a lot of coconut, a, a lot of coconut milk. And when I start doing a recipe, because I want to make sure I, I start enough cooking, I'll sit down and go over the African pantry and stuff like that with you, okay? Like, you We've got a few people who keep typing in answers in the question and answer tab. Try typing it in the chat, and then it's easier for us to find them and respond to them. And then also just read them off to me. Okay, Please. so we've got in the Q&A, uh, there's one answer, rice, pepper, tomatoes. I'm sorry, I was speaking to someone else, so I don't know. Oh, so what, you're, what that you're talking about to. the jalafonio? Uh, okay, someone is spamming, just repeatedly typing A over and over. Okay. I'm going to give you... Okay. Um, Here, this is um, flat, small, some people call it. You know, you can make, um, I don't know if this, is, this one is Mexican or Indian or, um, but the secret that a Nigerian girlfriend told me about, about jollof rice to put that special oomph into it is to, um, is to roast, is to char, Onion, wash off the red pepper. Sachar, red pepper, onion, and tomatoes. That's the base for jala. 
All right. So I only need a half a cup of this, they call it tomato stew. Um, but then you can keep some to make something else. Right, so you want to get a little char because the more char it has, the more flavor it will have. And if you use that secret, all I ask is that, okay, my friend Tukumba told me about it that you tell whoever, to, however you share it with, you say, who told you about it, okay? This is a good time to use your, your tomatoes that are like kind of not looking too good to eat fresh to use it for something. I have on the stove carrots curly. The carrot dip, all it is is the spices and carrots that have been boiled. All right. I'm just trying to keep you abreast of what's going on. I will show you. One carrot that I put here. I don't want to get too smoky in here. All right, so we have a question in the chat asking for recipes. Uh, there currently are no recipes. They're being developed right now. So um, at the end of the series, I can send the recipes out to everyone who uh, registered. All right, at the end being at the end of the month, okay? Yep. Because I just want people to understand, I want you to concentrate like on how people back in the day used to cook, right? My grandmother never gave me a recipe. My mama never gave me a recipe, right? I could sit down in the kitchen, learn how to cook. I couldn't really ask too many questions and definitely couldn't taste any food, right? So it allowed you to develop your sense of sight, smell, and understanding about how things come together. And that's what I really would prefer for you to understand, all right? Because you can get a recipe online. There's no reason for you to be here if you want to just cook my recipe. It's all about the process, all right? So I'm trying to see, um, I'm trying to put, um, Beans on. I will tell you. I will tell you what's in each recipe. I will not tell you the amount. That's really okay. But I'll tell you so you know what I'm doing. So I'm making Swahili vegan bean stew. All right. You can either use ghee, coconut oil, olive oil. I'm not going to slow down for you. If you want to, you can always come back to this video and watch it again. All right. Because if I do that, I can only, I'll only be able to do one recipe. And that's not really interesting if I was watching it myself. All right. And this I video have, is being recorded and you can find it on our Facebook page anytime as soon as it's done. All right. So we have one red onion chopped. I shouldn't tell you that. Okay. Bell pepper, garlic, ginger, carrot, curry, cinnamon, kidney beans, full fat coconut milk. All right, so do you see how, all right, do you see full fat? All right, you want that creaminess? So I just want to show you. And underneath here, it's um, more milk liquid, all right? So I like this brand because it's really thick. Okay. 
And then, um, so we cook onions and the peppers, garlic, ginger, all that kind of stuff. And then put the beans and coconut milk. And then at the end, we put spinach, all right? So in many places in the Caribbean, and I'm gonna tell you about the connections and it's not linear, life is not linear. So I know a lot of people are used to that. So I, I, I kind of feel a little self-conscious because I'm a different type of teacher. And a lot of people like that, but it's like usually when you're teaching a regular cooking class, it's not like this, it's a lot different. So I want you to be keyed into the process of this. Mm -hmm. Just look at the, the recipes and just talk about everything that is needed. Um, all right, so, so I cut the onion in half and um, this is a nice little easy technique. Go down and however big you want your onions is however big you slice it, small or big. If you want it really big, then you'd only do it like that. If you want it small, then you do it smaller cuts. All right, and then you hold it together. You always hold your hand like a claw. So you don't cut your, you don't cut your finger. The reason why I'm sitting down is because um, this table isn't the right height for me. So it's kind of hard. You can make carrots. No, you. Um, I'm talking to Tiffany. All right, we have a question. Someone wanted the recipe simply because they wanted help spelling the name. So, if you're willing to spell those out, I could type them into the chat. Pardon? Someone wanted help spelling the name of the uh, recipes, the dishes that you're making. So, if you could spell those out, I could type those into the chat. Um, well, I, I gave people the, I gave people my notes and they yeah. have all the names of the recipes on it. All right. So They're in the chat. Up. Uh, oh, it, when the I Google clicked on that link, it? yeah, when I clicked on the link, it says you need access. So all right, let me try requesting access. All right, let me just, um, sorry, let me, um, turn on link sharing, sorry. Apologize. Okay, link sharing should be on. All right. Let's see. So today we've got carrot dip, Swahili vegan bean stew, Moroccan beet salad, jollof fani. Is that spelled pronounced right? And then Ethiopian butter spiced collards. So I can put that in the chat. For um, dinner, if you want to. Right, I see so you have two assistants. Would you like to introduce your lovely assistants? I have my daughter, who usually is a camera person and producer and um, director. And then I have Tiffany Bimbo, who is the owner of um, Comfort. I'll let her introduce herself a little bit later so we can get some more stuff going on. Because <laughs> I want to be able to sit down and I have, I have, I, I do have um, a PowerPoint presentation. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show it, but I will send that to, I will send that to Rose if I'm not able to, but I hyper prepared. So I have a lot of materials for you. I don't mind giving to you, but when you give people stuff, especially at the beginning, then you're out. And then also I want you to experience the whole thing. So you learn about the richness of Pan-African food so wherever you are, if you're a chef, I don't know if there's chefs here, if there's dietitians, 
who is here, that you go and you share this information with other people who don't know about food from the African diaspora. That's what I want, all right? So if I give you a packet, then you'll just take it and then you won't probably come back. So I don't want that. Well, thank you, Tiffany, for joining us today. Thank you, Tiffany, for joining us. I do have some, I do have some coconut oil, but the olive oil is right there. But if you want to go with that coconut flavor, then you can. Right, and so we're gonna saute. Um, our onions and bell peppers and garlic and ginger until brown for around five minutes. All right. And then we're going to rinse the beans and then put them in. Um, we're going to shake our, I'm not going to shake it because it's not kind of sour. We're going to put the coconut nut in and then we're going to put a series of spices. So why would curry be in um, East Africa? Um, the ginger and um, ginger and garlic. No, one clove, just one clove of garlic. And then, um, did someone answer? Why is curry in East Africa? What would be the reasoning for that? I suppose the question would be, where did curry originate from? Where do you think curry originated from? Hmm. Is it perhaps Middle East? I know like 23 people on here can talk about curry. Come on now, folks. <laughs> India. Okay. All right. And so curry is, um, for lack of a better word, uh, I, I'm not going to use the word, but it is, it's really kind of British in origin. Oh. And curry is a set of spices. So like uh, garam masala. Okay. Garam masala and turmeric together make a curry. All right. But garam masala in everyone's house in India, people have their own secret version. So curry, depending on where you come from, and you'll see curry in a bunch of different recipes that we'll do from one week to the next, is because of how we traveled, and that's kind of important to the African diaspora, that you have the slave trade, um, but then you also have the spice trade and all that kind of stuff that intertwined that... Um, 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 I'm ginger, if you use a spoon, it just takes off what you need. This is around half an inch or not, right? So why would curry come to Africa? I told you the answer, basically, folks. I don't want to hear my own voice. I'm not that type of teacher. You don't learn like that passively. Even with adults. All right, so please talk to me. <laughs> so we do have a couple of responses. Uh, one, uh, Rachel said from Indian immigrants. Uh, Maria Fay said curry is a general term. Maria, would you like to elaborate on that a little? Mm -hmm. I can turn, uh, turn on allowing talking for you if you'd like to speak via audio instead of text. I would love to hear other people's voices. Okay, one moment. There you go. Hi, 
Hi, Nadine. Um, thank you Hi. for your patience Hi. with us. <laughs> just, uh, I just said I know it's going to take a little while for people to understand my style, but you'll get with it, though. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate you doing this. I just said it's a general term in the sense you already kind of explained it. Every family has a different recipe and it's, I guess, uh, different countries too, right? There, it's gonna be different with each each location. Um, I don't know the answer to your original question though. <laughs> oh, what is her? So, yeah, so, so, it's usually like a grandma salad and turmeric together and people have their own different mixes. So I'm Jamaican and, and I will go into this a little bit more when we talk about the Caribbean, but I'll just say the differentiation between Jamaican curry and Indian curry is that in Jamaica and in the Caribbean that there is, um, you have allspice, you have, so Grenada is called the Spice Islands, okay? so. Jamaica has some of the best ginger in the world. So you have more of those spices that a Caribbean curry is gonna be a little bit more sweeter and less pungent than uh, Indian curry. So all over Africa, Indians um, came as indentured for as traders, all different types of stuff. In the Caribbean, they came as indentured servants. Uh, I'm not sure if they came as indentured servants in Africa. I am not a historian, um, but so you have curry and the influence on West Africa. So in um, jollof, usually a little bit of curry is used. You have the curry influence in East Africa, you have curry in South Africa. And then in North Africa, you have different blends that are not curry, but in that vein. I am almost finished prepping. Hmm? No, no, I'm, I'm doing the peppers. Um, well, you can actually. And for anyone who's confused about not seeing things in the chat, I just noticed that everyone has been sending to all panelists and not to all panis, panelists and attendees. So I will read out anything that uh, posts in the chat, or you can switch to um, sending to it, uh, all panelists and attendees if you want everyone to see what you're saying. So Marion says, curry is a general term for many spice blends originating in India, but now spread all over the world because it's delicious, delicious and also healthful. I know curry is particularly popular in Japan where they have a bunch of pre-made uh, curry roux that you can buy in stores. They come in blocks that kind of look like a cross between, um, whatchamacallit? Oh yeah. Uh, like bullion cubes yeah. and blocks of chocolate, which you like dissolve into a stew and make curry. <laughs> And, That's um, the Japanese way. <laughs> right, and the Japanese curry is much more pungent than a Caribbean curry, for instance, right? And then the East African curries are gonna be kind of fake fragrant because Zanzibar, all those places over there, they have vanilla, they have allspice, they have cloves. So their curries would be a little bit more fragrant. So I want you guys to think about things in those ways because lots of, uh, of things about food are about common sense and understanding like, okay, the spice roots that a curry from Zanzibar, or East Africa, Kenya, it's gonna be sweeter because of all the, all the spices that they have over there. Nadine, I didn't catch the end of that when you turned away. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, the curry is gonna be sweeter because of all the Still can't hear you. We need a part for our, our mic. Um, so we're trying. Um, I said the, the curry in East Africa is going to have that sense of sweetness because of the things that grow over there, like cloves and allspice and vanilla and those types of fragrant spices. So that's gonna be in the spice mix because you usually eat what you're around, you know? Like, so that's what gets incorporated into your cuisine. Mm -hmm. 
Here's a chair and I have here. How many people are um, vegan or vegetarian? We've got one raised hand. If anyone else, oh, we got two, three. Four. So it looks like we got four vegan or vegetarians here. All these recipes are going to be vegan. And Liz in the chat said vegan. I can see how much water. Right. And Aisha in the Q&A said, moving toward it. Aisha, are you heading towards vegan or vegetarian? Vegan, OK. Or um, Rastafarians um, in different parts of the Caribbean, they call it oil down. And it is a milk is even more reduced than this, and it makes that it looks like all that cream right there. Um, We've got a comment from Barbara that looks fabulous already. Right. All you do, all we do is cut some salt and then some spinach, and that's finished at the end. Okay, you let it cook, come together. Got a question from Sheila. What was the white ingredient? Coconut milk. Okay. Coconut milk. Okay. Right. You don't want to get light. For this, you don't want to get light. You want to get full fat coconut milk. And Native Harvest is really thick. I wouldn't normally suggest it's like a brand, but this is really, really thick and that's what you want. Because a lot of them, they can be really watery. And I would suggest that you buy coconuts and make coconut milk, but I stopped doing that because most of the coconuts that you buy now in America, they're dry and they're around $5 each. So it's really hard to experiment when you buy like $20 with the coconuts and they all go to waste. So I don't, I don't do that anymore because it seems like it's really hard to get really good um, coconuts here, right? All right, so uh, that is um, going to cook on another stove with that simmer, and then we will. Um, thank you. We'll make the collard green. have flowers here for Oshun. Oshun is the Nigerian goddess of love. And so we brought her some flowers as an offering. I didn't also say um, that I'm obviously here for my ancestors, my grandmother, um, all our ancestors that taught us how to cook. And so I say thank you. These flowers are um, an offering of thanks also. So part of this workshop is um, also showing you how different cultures interact um, because a lot of our society is very, um, um, the way that we do things. So I don't know, the, the, I originally created this um, workshop to, um, teach a bunch of um, New York nutritionists and dietitians. And Omar Tate, who is a black chef that used to be in New York, but now he's in Philadelphia. You should check out, check him out. He's opening up a uh, like food community center. Um, that's really amazing. Um, and Nicole Taylor, who is a black food writer. We are all 
brought in to speak about food, um, the Black food from the African diaspora. So uh, my specialty is showing people how to eat more plant-based, preventative medicine, um, food as medicine. So that's where I am. And so a lot of people think that food from the African diaspora isn't healthy. However, most foods that people have grown up, like my grandparents were farmers and fishermen, and my family ate a little bit of meat. Most of the things they ate were like beans and um, the vegetables that they grew, fish that they, they got themselves. And so we've moved away from that. And so this is homage to that and trying to bring us back to our ancestors. I think that people might know decolonization of the diet, the whole nation of you know, what we need for ourselves going back to our own history and our, our ways of eating will, will save us, you know? So that's what I'm trying to be able to promote because a lot of people don't understand the beauty and um, the many dimensions of food from a continent that has 54 countries in it, all right? So um, Ethiopian butter spice colonies, you gonna use coconut oil or olive oil or butter. Allspice, cumin, garlic, collards, cayenne, half a cup of water, a quarter cup of lemon juice. However, I just gave you the measurements and I changed my own recipe because I'm doing it in half. So I'm doing it in half. So usually you would toast the spices and we and so you want to toast spices to bring out the fragrance, the fragrance of these um, of these spices. Oh no, you can put them together. It's fine. I'm just waiting for, I'm going to use coconut oil on this one, coconut milk. Balance good. Nadine, both your cameras are lagging a little bit. Pardon? Both of your cameras are lagging a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, I don't know. I have my. I don't know if you want to tell people where we are. Hmm? Oh, so Nadine is cooking out of Make Haven, which is a maker space in New Haven. It's about a about a block or two from the green. Um, it's a, a maker space is a place that has like lots of equipment for you to like make a whole bunch of stuff. So right now she's working out of the kitchen. They've got a wood shop. They've got I think they've got a metal shop and they've got like laser cutters and 3D printers yeah, and, sewing machines and vacuum formers. Thank you. A uh, whole bunch of stuff. And sometimes they have classes on how to use those as well. And they are a membership maker space. Um, I believe it's $50 a month. The New Haven Free Public Library also has a maker space. We've got a smaller selection of equipment. We've got 3D printers, laser cutter, CNC router, which is a carving machine, vinyl cutter, sewing machines. Uh, our, our equipment is free, but currently the library um, is not open to patrons because of the pandemic. So once we reopen, those will all be free to use and we offer classes on how to use them as well. We do not have a kitchen though. <laughs>
Where are their spice blends? And New Haven has a lot of really great restaurants here. I can hear that you're talking, but I can't hear what you're saying. Okay, All right. So you cook that for around 45 minutes. And if you don't want them cooked as long, you don't have to do so. That's how they cook them in Ethiopia. So they're cooked all the way down. If you don't want to, Brazil, they only cook them for a couple of minutes. You can spice them the way you want to and then not put as much water if you're not going to cook them down. All right? Uh, we've got a comment, nice collards, and a question. What was with the onions a moment ago? So I guess that would, what spices did you put in? Oh, um, it was allspice and cumin. So I was just toasting them to take to make the to make the fragrance bloom. All right, so that's a really um, easy tip for like curry or you know cloves, cinnamon, cumin seeds, coriander seeds, that kind of stuff, mustard seeds. Toast them a little bit, and it brings out more more flavor and more smell, more fragrance. Go over there. Yeah. All right, so I would say that this is done. And because I have my mask on and kind of be cool, um, I would usually taste it to see if it needed salt. And it does probably need salt, but I'll do that afterwards. And so at the when you finish, you put spinach in there and I would just turn it off. I don't like my vegetables cooked. I do not like my vegetables cooked all the way down. And I always, I suggest that people cook for their personal preference. So I am not a traditionalist. I will teach you how to make something traditionally and I will tell you how it is, but I think that you should cook food for your own personal taste. All right, so we're gonna do the phonio now. In the cover. Can we try? It's too small. Do you want to put this in this bowl? Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're just cleaning out something. And um, it's out for around eight minutes. I'll talk about um, African uh, food from the African diaspora. Right, but I want it to be a give and take kind of thing, like where we have some um, interaction with each other. Okay, so we have a what question. Do know uh, what's about the name of the big pan Africa? that was what used country? earlier? Uh, we have a question. What's the what? name of the big pan yes. that was used earlier? Does it have a name? Is it, is it a skillet? A, a saute pan? Okay. Oh, oh, this one down underneath here, the cast iron pot. That? Uh, I don't think so. Oh. Uh, I think you're um, we need that. Um, okay. Um, I'm trying to do the spotlight so you see. Huh? What happened? 
Um, you go with it? Okay. All right. So she's going to show you in a second. Or are you talking about this pan? Can you see like the charred vegetables? So in Mexico and other cultures, when you're making sauces, that charness adds flavor. All right, so those are the tips that I want you to learn. Not just recipe, but how to be able to do the same technique in the different recipes that you do. All right, so charring something beforehand, and then you put it into use an immersion blender, or you know you chop it up. It's going to add more flavor. All right, so um, so what do people know about Africa? So Tiffany just said the food is spicy. Can you, do, can you get ready the, um, the beef salad? Yeah, thank you. No one wants to talk to me? I'm feeling lonely. Is that for you over there? Aisha says, I know that there are very different cultures on the continent. I teach that Africa is not a country. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. One moment, Melinda. What did someone say? Uh, there was a comment. I know that there are very different cultures on the continent. I teach that Africa is not a country. Exactly. So Africa and is a continent that has 54 countries, right? And there's so many different things that are going on, all right? So depending on where you're from. So I would say I'm not a specialist in African cuisine. All right, I'm not a specialist. However, I'd say like I have the most um, experience with West African food. Um, and I guess like, I mean, a lot of people, think that I'm known for North African food because because I teach people how to eat healthy. A lot of North African food is healthy and from the Mediterranean. And it's also easy, it's easy to show people how to be able to make and have a sense of facility with it. Um, some of the other ingredients are harder to get. Um, so I'm going to bring over my camera to where I have the different spices, right? So this is hot pepper. African hot pepper. We're going to use this tomato stew that I bought. But this is just how it showed you how to do the onions, peppers. Nadine, can you hear me? Yeah, and tomatoes. Yay. Yeah. Hi, it's, it's Melinda. Um, this is Hi, really Melinda, interesting. I Hi. Um, I had a previous uh, four o'clock commitment, so I said I could only be on the first hour, but I just wanted you to hear my voice because I, I really appreciate that you want to have a conversation. And just to tell you that I have to get off now, but um, I'm going to try to come to future ones and be able to stay. Um, and I, the re I'm a vegetarian and the recipes just sound fabulous. So I'm excited about cooking them eventually. So I don't, you right. know, can, can you see me? Cause I can see you, but I can't stop see by. What? I said, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate oh, yes. it. Yes, yes, thank you. Really, really. And, and the, 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 the uh, what do you call it? The pyramids, the different food pyramids were really fascinating and I didn't, I've never seen that before. So I'm gonna look at that too. All right, take care. Thank you for doing it. Hi, hi, what's your daughter's name? Brit, no. Thanks for, thanks for helping. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Nadine, we had a couple comments. Uh, Gary O said, uh, great information so far. I'm enjoying the presentation. And also in your, to your question about um, what kind of foods are in Africa, lots of stews and full flavored dishes. And we had a couple questions right. from Kathy. So, uh, what were the staple foods most ate and cooked with on a regular basis? And what were the most common spices used? Okay, so I was trying to show you guys, and I'm going to bring the thing over there a little bit, some of the stuff from West Africa, All right? So one of the spices from West Africa that is very famous is suya seasoning. It's from Nigeria. You can make your own. 
is peanut powder, garlic powder, onion powder, ginger, hot pepper. And just like curry or any other mixed spice, people have their own version. When we say West Africa, we say Nigeria. Remember that they have um, borders. So like the Wolof people were, um, Wolof comes from, it, it um, spreads between Nigeria, Senegal, and other borders, you know? So other people, there's different versions of Suya in different countries. Oh, I love this. It is, um, it's called Chifpa. So a lot of things that um, are traditional in, um, African food, and I, I wonder, like historically, the whole notion of using salted fish um, as a seasoning. So they use a lot of dried fish, a lot of dried shrimp in their in their um, in their foods. And this is a hot pepper. It can be used as a condiment, chitko, um, or I'm. I'm mixing up two different cultures. So that's in Ethiopia. So um, it's hot pepper sauce. Um, and this one is from Liberia. And I like the ones from Liberia. They can be hard to be able to find. But any African market will have a pepper sauce. And even if you don't like hot pepper, you can use it as a seasoning that when you're talking about stews, which is like, I feel like, you know, Africa's contribution to the world is that, you know, a Creole sauce, or they won't call it that in Africa, but like outside of Africa, we call onion, pepper, tomato as a base. I feel like that comes from Africa. And then also what they do is like, they'll put a little bit of this seasoning, dried pepper, dried fish um, in their rice or in their, in their stews to add like a nice mommy and smoky, um, smoky flavor, just like you would have like um, the whole notion of using anchovies or um, fish sauce is the same, that same kind of um, yeah, idea <laughs> and, and flavor that adds, adds to food. So, um, ooh, 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 this is burning. Can you just mash them? So, and then can you, can you just make sure, let me just talk about the rest of the folio. Everything for the folio is um, all set and then I'll do it. So in, in East Africa, or I'll go North Africa, they have a lot of those fragrant spices and they make them into all different mixes. So you might have um, Berber, that's from Ethiopia, but um, I'm like Ras um, Al Hamit, which is um, from, Northern Africa, it's like, like um, paprika based. And then they have all these fragrant spices. And so they'll use cinnamon, allspice, coriander, um, clove, and all these really great mixes to add to meat, you know, whether it be a kebab, to rice like pilafs or pilaus or biranis. The same thing for East Africa. East Africa has very much um, uh, Indian influence on there. Um, and so you have pilaus and biranis, but then you'll also have in um, Kenya, sukumawiki, which is another way of doing collard greens with onions and tomatoes. Um, and it's something that is very, very popular. Um, you have things like ugali or fufu or things that are like kind of like mush. So I'm, if we have time, I'll go over the, um, the PowerPoint presentation. I don't know how helpful it's going to be to you, like just giving it to you without going over it, but it does have lots of information in there about trade and quotes and like people that you should know about. And at the end, I will have a lot of that information for you. In my packet today, I have information on Black food stylists, Black photographers, and, you know, tips in which it, in, in regard to taking. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that today because I just told you like this light is 
really harsh. And I don't know if I can control the light enough from the two different openings that we have to be able to create a really good picture. Um, but we'll make sure that we'll be able to do it next week. Or if we have to put something in at the end where we go somewhere and we use um, that we concentrate on natural light because natural light is obviously best. And when you're in the basement, you don't have any natural light. All right, South Africa. Um, South Africa also has Mele, which is like, you know, descendants of Indians there. And then it has, you know, um, you have the Dutch that were there. Um, and of course, like the indigenous people that were there. So they have a mix, they call their cuisine rainbow cuisine because of all the different types of people that are there. And then in uh, Central Africa, they're known for, what would they be known for? A lot of meat, okay, because they don't have access to the ocean. Um, mafe is a, is a big um, dish, which is a peanut stew, which is goes from West Africa to Central Africa. That is something that a lot of people eat. And then we're talking about stews. You have all these stews that are like kind of tomato based, like okra stew, which is like a precursor to gumbo, for instance. You know, so I'll talk about that more tomorrow, like um, next week, where the connections between Africa and the dishes that came to the new world. All right, so that's just like a brief overview. Um, but as you said, like the continent is 54 countries. You know, obviously if you're by the water, you're gonna eat more fish. Um, you know, rice is a really big deal, jollof rice. So we'll talk a lot about, we'll talk about, I won't say a lot, but we'll talk about jollof rice and um, that jollof rice comes from the Senegalese. And so they have their national dishes called Febujen. And Febujen is, my favorite version of jollof rice, but you know, I'm not going to say that there's a hierarchy. But I would say Senegalese, then Liberian, and then Liberian never gets any play in African food. And Liberians have some really great food. I don't know if it's like the mixture of the people that came from America back to Liberia after um, slavery ended um, or what, but Liberians have really good food that no one really talks about. Um, so, Nadine, we have a question. Uh, Gary L says, I got some spices from Africa, really. I got, sorry if I'm messing up the pronunciation, ch chakalaka, pot, potsecos, and rice spice. Any ideals for the ideal, I, any suggestions for the ideal dishes for them? Okay, chakalaka is from South Africa, and that is usually baked beans with vegetables. I've never made it because it doesn't sound very appetizing to me, but I don't like baked beans really. So I wouldn't really want to mix them with fresh vegetables, but that's what that is. And then what were the other spices? Uh, Potsecos, P-O-T-S-I-E-K-O-S. I've never heard of that one. Oh, is that, I think that's a stew. That's a Dutch that's stew. Okay, and the other one was just called that's rice spice. Stew. Yeah, like probably like just for a pilau or birani, because every, you know, like every African country has like a jollof rice or like a pilau. Pilau comes from, um, it's in origin from Persia and Iran, you know? So that's where pilau's come from. Biranis are, are um, Indian, and then they use a certain type of rice. So they use like basmati rice or that kind of shelly, like fragrant type of rice that um, not long green rice. Um, I like the questions. Rose, can you see the greens? Uh, no, I can't see the overhead cam right now. Oh, can you make the overhead camera a participant? Please. Oh, okay, yes, let's make that co-host again. 
Perhaps I got disconnected at some point. There we go. All right. I just wanted to show you how much the water had cooked down so you guys see those techniques so you can see from sight like when something is almost finished but as I said like they might make, 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 make that go on a lot longer I will stop it right there because I don't really like my greens unless it's like African-American style greens cooked all the way down so things are all really up to your preference Get all the on. All right, so I'm going to um, make Fonio. So I'm just going to go over the recipe with you first. Okay, so you have Fonio. We're gonna have either veggie broth or water. I'm just gonna use water and put a little bit of salt in there. You have half a, a, um, a quarter cup of tomato stew and a half teaspoon of curry and a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So to half a cup of fonio, I'm telling you the, the, um, the measurements for this because it is a rice. Or a grain, and you kind of need to know the measurements in order to be able. The other things you don't need to know the measurements. You can um, bootleg it, and it'll be fine. But for the fonio, it will come out either too dry. Or too dry. So, all right. So, half a cup of dry fonio, three fourths of a cup of veggie broth, a quarter cup of tomato stew, and the tomato stew is just a combination of roasted peppers, onions and tomatoes. If you don't want to roast them, what usually people do is they put all of those ingredients raw into a food processor or in um, a blender. And they turn it all up and down and it becomes like really soupy and they use that as their base, right? Yep. So Tiffany is going to be Getting the water to boil. Add the spices, which is like some curry and a little hot pepper. If you don't want the hot pepper, just adjust it to your, your liking. That's tomato stew. Just like rice, when the water is out of boil, you add the fonio in. And put the cover on. Let's start, you'll stir it, don't stir it, yeah. There you go. Pull in. Oh. It probably smells delicious in there right now. It does. It does. Awesome. Do you see me forward? Because I think we lost you on my computer. So I Yeah, it looks like it's just the overhead cam right now. The forward cam must have got Okay. All right. Okay. So we're gonna turn this down. All right, so here I'm gonna turn it down so it doesn't burn. Just like rice. You 
Okay. And then just do you want to draw um oh and um we're trying to get ready. Um we're trying to we're trying to get the other one working. All right. I need a little bit of stuff. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So these recipes have the least amount of ingredients because I'm developing them for the average person. And even allspice, people might not necessarily have. I think it's a really great investment. And um, because it is um, a, a, a well-rounded spice that you can use in lots of different things. Allspice tastes like, like what it says, allspice. So it tastes like cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, all that kind of stuff together. It is a staple in Jamaican food, um, but it's also staple around um, the world um, to use in different different things. But usually it's um, in non-Black countries, it's usually used as um, yeah, pickling, but then also it's used for sweet things, you know, and desserts and yeah, yeah. It's like what kind of like pumpkin spices emulates. Oh, there's a question. I think I missed what was in the tomato stew earlier. So could you list the ingredients in that again? Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to repeat myself. So I'm going to move on and say that it's only Fonio and um, and if I were to basic recipes, I would, I would use vegetable stock or chicken stock. There's a comment in the chat. They can watch the video for ingredients, right? Yes, that's correct. These videos will be on our Facebook page. You can watch them anytime. So if, if you'd like to review to see what the ingredients were. And she showed a can of what the tomato stew, stew was earlier. It was literally a can that said yeah. tomato stew. It appeared, I believe she said it was- I'm not sure at an African like restaurant. You're not gonna be an Af African store. You're not gonna be able to find it. So you just have to use like what- I can't hear what you're saying just now. I can see that you have know what's going on. Onions. Rose, can you see yep. it? You can't hear me. I can hear you now. When you were over there, I could not hear you. Thank you. 
Oh, there's a comment. We call all spice in Jamaica pimento. Yeah, exactly. Now we've got another comment. Well, Looking forward to trying these dishes. Yeah, carrot salad. So we have pickled beets. Pickled beets are one of the like so We have a can of chickpea and so you guys, you guys all want a recipe. This is so painful to me that I have to go and list the ingredients. I just want to freestyle it and just say, okay, I'm done. But because I'm recipe testing, I have to make sure that I measure everything and know what I'm doing. So if this dressing is orange juice, olive oil, cumin, paprika, black pepper, cilantro. And if you want to, you could add um, feta and pistachios if you want to. We're not going to do that. We're going to make everything vegan today. I'm just going to put like a teaspoon of red pepper because I like allium. And then it, it finishes with a um, it finishes with a handful of cilantro. So you seem like we're going to have a little bit of time to kind of play and then I might be able to go over this um, PowerPoint presentation with you. We've got another comment that simply says, yum. Very simple salad, and um, I love Moroccan and North African food because they have milk, which is like supplements, you know, and they have a lot of different. Salads, chips, little small little things to eat. I love that. If you want to see that, you can add some allspice, you can add some coriander. I love coriander. That's a secret spice of mine. Because it tastes like orange. And so, but it is kind of expensive. So I wouldn't put it in here for to have someone else make it. But I offer that to you that if you have coriander, you want to be able to use it. I love it because it gives a hint of orange. Most people can't tell, but it, it really makes things pop. So that's a secret spice of mine. I won't write these things down. I won't write that down to you. I'm going to tell you that, but I'm not going to write it down. We've got a comment from Rhea. Yes, it's delicious in salad dressings. Yeah, exactly. 
So I'm just gonna go over the character because we don't have, um, the blender was not working. I would have brought my immersion blender, but um, I didn't know. So, but this is one of my favorite dips to be able to bring to a potluck, not like we have those anymore, but when we do, or you know, you want to bring it over to a family gathering for a bar, or just for yourself. It's something that's different than hummus because everyone brings hummus, you know? So I have a bunch of dips that I make because I love dip. Um, that especially for vegans and vegetarians, because so many people bring like cheese dip and all of that, that it's something that is different. So um, we have a, a bag of carrots, one pound of carrots, garlic, red wine vinegar, orange juice, olive oil, honey. Um, this honey is from Harlem and um, it's from a garden that I work with called Project Harmony on 122nd Street between 7th and 8th. They have um, a beehive and all these wonderful things. They have mulberry trees, so they grow, um, they make mulberry jam um, and sell it at their farmer's market, but it's a really lovely garden, but this is honey from Harlem. So super um, colorful. Um, there's cumin, paprika, allspice, red hot pepper, and then you can garnish it if you want to with a little paprika oil. You know, but it's really good. All you do is just the carrots and all those ingredients, um, and you put it in a food processor or, or a blender, and then it's done. So now this is going to be like kind of like I would, I would call this like um, Julia Child says never to apologize. I would I would rename this a carrot um, pate, okay? Because it's like it's like chunky. Yeah, yeah. So it would still be good, um, you know, on crackers or on bread. You know how like people do avocado toast. This would be really good on that. You know, so of course, if you put it in the food processor, it's going to be all like a regular dip. But I did want to show it to you because it's one of the things that. I make all the time, it's really easy. And I wanna encourage people to make their own snacks um, so they know where it's coming from. A bag of carrots is usually only 99 cents. So this is one of the really cheap things to be able to make for you or your family or your friends that is really also very tasty, all right? So we either are going to do this. We're either gonna go over the, um, I don't know if I can really do both because, um, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we start with the presentation? Because I'm sure you probably want to see that. Um, and we'll see about Tiffany clearing up a little bit over there so we can maybe do one or two pictures. I want to try and do the Jalof picture. Um, and Tiffany, can you try and share these? These are such things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to make some um, garnish so it looks pretty because the jollof rice is just the phonio. So the way that the accoutrement that I made, can you see the cabbage? It was like the cabbage to try and make it a deconstructed um, kind of like um, Debbie Jen. Debbie Jen, Debbie Jen um, in Senegal, they they cook. Senegal is like on the west coast of Africa, so it's a very much a fishing town. So Debbie Jen usually has fish, but they, you could have it in with meat or beef, you know, probably not with pork because, you know, they there are Christian and Muslim people there, however, probably not with pork. Um, so they cook up the fish in oil and they take the fish out of the oil and they cook up these vegetables in oil and they put the rice and tomatoes and all that kind of stuff. And so the rice is cooked in this delicious broth or, you know, sauce that has been made from fish. <coughs> then they put it all together. I love Harlem because, excuse me, that's where they have Little Senegal. And I would say that, you know, um, I love all food from Africa, but Senegal is probably my favorite. And um, I love how this, this whole notion of taranga, taranga means welcome. In, um, in Walla. And so the whole, um, I studied in Paris for six weeks, I studied um, cooking. And so I, 
had a, a, a Senegalese boyfriend. And so he brought me over to his family's house one week after meeting me, Taranga, you know? And it was the loveliest thing. Like his family was so sweet and they made Debbie Jen and like you all sit down all together, you eat with your hands. And it was the best Debbie Jen slash dollar price I've ever had in my life. I'll be chasing that for the rest of my life, um, how to be able to make it. Um, I have never made it that well. I hope, hope, hopefully one day, but that's the story of where jollof comes from. And then, you know, I like, I like vegetable in my jollof rice. A lot of people find it to be blasphemous. Um, but I do like vegetables because it adds color and jollof rice is, you know, like there is dimension to it with the tomato and the pepper and, um, the onions. But it tastes really good when you add eggplant and you have all these different vegetables in there too, especially if you have the contrast of fish. All right, I'm gonna try, can we share the screen? Rose, so I can show my presentation, please. Go down to the bottom, click the share screen button, see if that'll work. Okay. Oh, yay. Hey, you guys. Yep. Right. There it is. I'm going to go. I'm going to try. Well, I don't, I don't know if I have to really go but, um, with it really fast. So you can just tell me when to stop, you know, like if you want to ask a question, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to see you once I start. Okay. Uh, there's a question. Is that rice dish listed in the Google Docs? I had trouble hearing the name of it. Oh, no, it is not. Um, I, I will, one of the reasons why I'm not going to give you like a complete thing is that the way that I teach is that it's based on who's here and what you need, right? So I'll remember that I, I, that, um, I have a whole thing on Jollof, for instance, to give you the history of it, but it starts in Nigeria. So, but I will include that because it's important that you understand understand the story of Jollof. I did not put that in right now, but I will. You understand? So that's why I want to give it to you at the end. So I give you something that makes sense and um, is to my liking. <laughs> could you spell the name of it so I, so I could just type it into the chat? Just the name? Um, C -H -E -W. C -H -E -B -U separate word gen. They have other other ways of spelling it. So C H E B U and what was the second no, 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 word? Not C. T H W W. T H E B U separate word J E Gen. J E N, sorry. W Gen. Okay. okay. All right. So oh gosh. I love this writer. Um, she has books on Nigerian food and culture, where she writes them um, in film, and her writing is so amazing. So food in any culture is never affairs and pleasures about textures and aroma and about cultural identity. All right, so if we can understand that for <laughs> these four weeks, all right, so the Centennial Project is a project in Africa where it is um, just like, you know, it's part of um, our Google Arts and Culture. And so they do really wonderful content um, around, especially West African culture, foodways, art, all that kind of stuff. And so the reason why I want to do this is because I think it's important to um, make sure that we share about African food, but then we also write about it and take pictures with it. You know, like if you're looking for um, stock photos on black food or African food from the African diaspora, they'd be really hard to come by. You know, so it's really important that we create this body of work in order for people to understand um, the richness of the food. All right, so these are just some of my, um, I don't know if people know about Edna Lewis. Okay, she's the godmother of um, 
African American food. I'll talk more about her next week. So I don't mean to go by really fast, but um, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go read all these different slides, but the whole idea about like my practice, like what I do is that um, I've worked with lots of different organizations, including, I don't know if there's dietitians and nutritionists here, but old ways, um, if you Google me, like I have a Moroccan carrot recipe in old ways, um, not old ways, um, um, Cooking Matters, Cooking Matters. So Cooking Matters is a six week program that teaches people how to eat well, and it's usually free. Um, and they have a, a nice curriculum that teaches people week by week, different ways, like how to eat better protein, how to eat more high fiber, all that kind of stuff. So, but a lot of these um, organizations, they are white led and um, I have no problem with anyone being able to teach, but a lot of people don't have cultural humility or, or relevancy where they understand the people that they're teaching. And so I think it's really important that if you're, if you're, I'm Jamaican, right? And if I say to a Jamaican, oh, I want you to eat quinoa, they're not gonna be like quinoa, you know? Like, so how do you have people be able to embrace their culture and affirm their culture and then also maybe make the necessary changes they need to be able to eat healthier. It's really important to be culturally relevant. And especially, you know, as I said at the beginning, a lot of people feel like, oh, um, from the African diaspora is, is not healthy. That's not the truth. And so we've moved away from that because of how much money we have. And, you know, like people don't realize the correlation between more money and eating more protein, you know, because back in the day, my grandparents, even they want to give their 13 kids more meat, they didn't have the money to do it in Zisa. You know, so people had soup with a little bit of meat in there and had lots of beans and lots of vegetables. And it's just that in the recent, recent, you know, our recent, um, how we're living right now, <laughs> why we eat more meat than we usually do. And so this is the whole idea about Taranga. So um, as Pierre, Sam says, it's like the way to treat your guests, you know? So when, you know, I went to my boyfriend's um, family's house, they treated me like I was like family. They were like wonderful and they were beautiful. And they were, they were so nice. And I felt kind of subconscious because I'm not Muslim and I had my, my, um, I didn't know we were going there. So I had my, my arms showing, you know, and they were, they were fine. And they were, they were so, they were so lovely and wonderful. And so one of the things I want people like at each one of these, um, workshops, I'm going to talk about a way of being, a cultural way of being. So for the Caribbean, I might talk about being Irish, you know, um, next week, um, I don't know what I'll talk about, but I'm sure I'll talk about something. Yeah. All right. So that's the dish right there. That's the, that, that's the precursor to jollof. And you see the fish and then the vegetables. They have like cassava and eggplant, all that kind of stuff. And so the history of the African diaspora is a tenuous one. As you can see, the slave trade. And the reason why I show this is that you see that when they took people from Africa, they brought them over to the new world. They picked up certain um, supplies and traded. And then they did a whole triangular trade. It's really important that when people say like, oh, like slavery was so long ago, why, you know, why, why, why there is such a hang up? It's really not that long ago. But then also, if you look at the triangular tra slave trade and like, you know, um, how money was made, many of our banks of today are like the, the legacy of money is from the slave trade. Many our insurance companies, the legacy is from the slave trade, even to this day. So when, you know, indigo, all these different things, and then food stuff traveling all around the world, it happened because of the slave trade. So it's really important to understand um, that, yeah, and to acknowledge and to, to give respect to so many Black people that have cooked all around the world and that were dragged away from their families. So we have this beautiful hairstyles. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize that. I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about, because I, I don't want to, I want to kind of keep things like Africa, African American, even though they all intertwine, fine. But we'll talk about the hairstyles next week and like seeds and all that kind of stuff and how, you know, People might think that the slaves weren't um, very educated and all that kind of stuff, but they brought people that they knew, for instance, for rice, that they were cultivating rice before America. And the way that they cultivated rice was um, 
with high technology. So they brought those people over that had that information to be able to go down to the low country, for instance, that we'll talk about next week when we make, um, make uh, a certain type of rice with rice from the Carolinas, is that they brought those slaves there because they knew that they had the ability to be able to maximize how much production was had for their masters. Right, but what is um, really important to understand is that the food is a rainbow cuisine, right? And this is a slide that kind of talks about the inness of African food to the Americas. And so you see gumbo and um, so okra soup is from West Africa and probably all over, I, I assume probably all over um, Africa. And then you have cow soup that's in the Caribbean. You know, so you have Cali soup that's in Jamaica, Guyana, other places, and that's made with Cali, but it's also made with okra. And the way that it's made with okra, they cook the okra down just like in Africa. And when you use a spoon, for instance, you can go like this, and the gelatinous nature of the okra, you can see it, right? Um, so in West Africa, you have um, black eyed pea fritters. In Brazil, you have black eyed pea fritters. Um, in Africa, you have red red, which is right here. Um, red red is on the, the I don't know, I guess it might be your left. It's on the blue plate. Okay. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. Right. All right. So that's red red. The black piece is cooked in palm oil, which is another ing essential ingredient. I don't use it because it's heavy on my stomach. Usually I might use a little bit just for some color, but it's used, it's come from the palm tree and it's a staple ingredient in Africa. It is becoming um, over harvest because it's used in a lot of things like chocolate and all different types of stuff. But red, red is black eyed peas and usually it's, it's eaten with, um, you, know, you know what, that one isn't, that, that's curry black eyed peas. This is red, red. Red, red is usually with plantains and black eyed peas. And then this is hop and john, which is from America, you know, and the South and like, you know, people eat it for um, good luck. You see the connections. I want to show you the connections to Africa. It's really important. And then you have mokeka. So we made that, the, um, the black eyed pea, we made the red bean stew with coconut milk. So that's from Africa. But then, you know, on West Africa, they also use coconut. Um, but in Brazil, they have something called moqueca, which is fish usually, or meat. Yeah, it's a regional fish soup from Bahia, which is the section of Brazil that has the largest percentage of Black people. And the largest percentage of Black people outside the, of Africa is in Brazil, just so you know. So I'm giving you guys just, I'm trying to give you a little bit, like I'm not a historian, but I'm trying to give you the information, some information so you can make, see connections, All right? So you have pescada de coco, in the Latin Caribbean, which is fish and coconut milk. And then um, in Jamaica, you have run down or oil down. Um, and also in other parts of the Caribbean, they might call it oil down, which is just reduced coconut milk with vegetables. And it can be with meat also. Yes. So as Tiffany said, we have clam chowder. The connection. All right, and so like, especially like in low country, for instance, they have like clam, they have clam chowder, and the different ways in which they make the clam chowder. You can see, next week I'll talk a little bit more about that in regard to especially low country, you'll be able to see the connections between Africa and the Caribbean because they were separated from the mainland of America. You are able to keep the Africanisms a lot more than other places in America, right? So. I, as I said, I originally did this presentation for nutritionists and dietitians. And the whole idea is about like, what does your food story say about how is your influence or how you deal with the people that you serve? But I just say it to you, like, what is your food story? How does that influence your nutrition and your relationship with food? How do you perceive how people learn about food and cooking education and nutrition literacy based on this? From the information you record, you can gain a better understanding of yourself and your connection to food and health. Because I think it's really important that you do that work, especially if you work with other people that I know about a lot of different cultures. So when I work with people, if I work with someone from, uh, you know, if I work with someone from Senegal, I'll be able to talk to them about, oh, I love Debbie Jim. 
oh, I love Lambie, or, you know, like, um, yeah, the, not Lambie, I'm like, I'm, this is what I get afraid of when I don't have something in front of me, because I have so many different words from so many different countries in my head. Lambie is, um, is Haitian, um, kunk, Haitian kunk. Um, um, I'm, I'm forgetting what the, the word for um, the Senegalese um, lamb chops are. They're really good. Debbie, Debbie, D-I-B-I, -I, Debbie. So uh, Nadine, we have a question. Uh, will this info be in the Google Docs? So will you put um, like a link to the PowerPoint in the doc yes. or? OK. Yes. It's not going to come to the end. And there's also um, a thank you for you. So, oh, so. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. I want you to use information and share it too. I like I love to share. So I'll just say quickly who I am because I didn't, and I'll let I'll let Tiffany talk about who she is. So I grew up. What informs me? I grew up Seventh Day Adventist. Even though I do eat meat, I'm very much um, plant based. I do eat meat though. Um, but because I grew up Seventh Day Adventist, and most people I'm 50, so when like, people say like, oh, like people don't eat healthy, I grew up around so many people that ate healthy, and so many Black people that ate healthy my whole life. You know, so that were vegan, they made their own gluten and, you know, all types of stuff. I grew up with that. You know, they made, um, they made meatloaf with, I don't know, what, with beans and all that kind of stuff. But it tastes like meat, you know, for instance. You know, that's how I grew up. I grew up, my grandparents were farmers and fishermen. I grew up going back and forth to Jamaica, so I was always around that. I love food. I grew up in Toronto. And to the age of 10. And my mom used to take me every Friday. My mom was very much a Jamaican cook, very, still is very home style. She'll tell you like, we made pasta this week. I'm like, you guys need to eat some pasta. She's like, you know, I don't eat pasta. You know, so she doesn't, she's very, she'll, you know, and Jamaican food will talk about this out of many young people. It's a lot, it's, you know, lots of different things, but she's not eating pasta. That's one thing that she's not gonna really eat. So, I grew up in that kind of background, but then on Fridays, she would take me to different neighborhoods. So like Toronto has a huge Chinatown and Greek town. And so we go out to eat. And so I always love different foods and different cultures. And so that has informed who I am. And, you know, my business is called Global Local Gourmet. I'm trying to show people how to eat local food. I am not, you know, stringent about it because I understand there might be price constraints or, you know, like where can you get it and stuff like that. But if you can, like, I'd love for you to grow food in a garden or grow herbs at your house, you know, like, so, um, but I want to be able to share food, um, to talk about different cultures because hopefully, like, for instance, you'll go to a Senegalese restaurant, you know, at the end of this, you'll go have some jollof rice, you know, like, um, and learn about the culture. You'll go to uh, a market, you know. Um, I think that that's really important, especially in the world that we live in. Okay, Tiffany. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tiffany. Um, I my business is Space Comfort, and what I like to do with that is reinvest in the connection that we have with food, like the integral connection. Uh, and nowadays, I feel as if we um, we just talk about diets or like you know calories and different things like that, and I. I feel like it's really important for people to understand that food is not just like a fad, it is like integral to your everyday uh, health and mind, body, and spirit. Um, I am so happy to be working with Nadine because a lot of the things that she's talking about is, is how I grew up. I have a Jamaican background, so a lot of these things are awfully familiar to me. And, you know, with my goals and trying to reinvest in your connection with food, by exploring simple recipes, you know, doing certain like, things like this, I love learning about it. Some of these, th some of these things are familiar. Uh, just because of my Jamaican background, so I can kind of pull from that. But most some of these things I'm also learning. So, you know, always open to learn and just explore new and unique recipes and, you know, just staying healthy and wholesome with the food that you eat. Thank you. So this is a cooking tent. And so I do like cooking in different ways. And so I might do, I, I, I do less and less of these, but I do things where people are interacting because it's important that the reason why I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to chastise you or make you feel bad about not talking, but, you know, we're on Zoom all the time, and I am a trained educator, and when you just have a passive ex experience, only 10% of the information you retain. So when we're going back and forth, and we have dialogue, at least, and unfortunately, like, you can't be here in here cooking together, because that would be what I want, um, then it helps you to retain the information and just sit down and just watch me, you know, so... Um, I'm trying to also um, show and um, and 
have people see like how you can have an interactive experience and how the questions that you ask, it's like, I don't, I don't want to assume that you don't know anything about African food. I would like to know what you know about African food so then I can be able to serve you better. All right. So these are places that these are all kinds of different. Um, I am also an artist, so I'm like the creative in residence. And so this is like the most like of what I've done my job probably today um, in regard to because I have another aspect of myself where I'm like, I do um, interventions and in social sculptures like this, but I'm today I'm going to be making some jewelry. Um, I have another program after this. Um, but um, I do installation, all that kind of stuff. But these are ways in which you can engage people. This was a, a food community center called Public Kitchen. I'm going to bring a version of it to New Haven in April. This was at Yale. It's also a public kitchen. And there's all different types of exercises for people. Like this is like a food, a, a map that has different keys that people can add to. Um, there's recipe sharing. Um, here's another. Um, event that we did in Fairhaven, which is a Latino neighborhood. And it's like asking people what's on your plate to then talk about it, you know, like, and so for kids to draw what they eat, and then for us to have a conversation, it's a lot different when you draw something than when you talk about it. And then here, this is out on the street in Boston, um, doing a demo and having people be able to write their own recipes. I wish we could watch this tape and um but this is like my who i channel um and not a lot of people talk about her people talk about edna lewis people talk about jessica um b harris tony tipton martin you know these are like you know the grandmothers or the you know like the the queens of african-american food but people don't really talk about her smart Bresna. um and she called herself a culinary anthropologist and a culinary griot. And I would say like that would be, you know, I don't have a PhD, she, had, she got a PhD and I mean, she has an amazing life and they're trying to do, uh, a, uh, I think a documentary on um, um, Stacey, da uh, no, Julie Dash, who did um, Daughters of the Dust and she was in Daughters of the Dust, which is from the Gullah Geechee people. I'll talk about that next week. But she from um, Gullah Geechee, low country and like kind of like Zora Neale Hurston, just on the more culinary bent, she wrote down and preserved the whole notion of food, especially from her region. Exactly. But yeah, she's really, she really is amazing. So you should go on YouTube and look her up. And this is out, this will be in the document where I Exactly. And then she brings a lot of art and um like the whole like domestic arts, like the 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 woman behind things, like what we preserve to, you know. Um And making sure that you know you eat from the land, um, stuff like that. So I'm gonna. A lot of my practice, I've studied a lot of farming at Sterling College. I know people know Soul Fire Farm, and you know the whole notion of regeneration permaculture as it applies to diversity. We're all interconnected, and it's really important that we understand that. And that that's how I teach in regard to food. But then also I always talk about waste, and especially when it comes to people of color and black people, we were given waste and how, you know, we use that waste to then make wonderful things. Um, but then also the whole notion that, you know, like my grandparents, this is a really good video also that will be in there that kind of sets the tone for where we are in our society, which oh, Nadine, you cut out again. So. I'm sorry. Are you seeing? 
Uh, let's okay. see. I don't want to start the video because it's too long. Yeah, we've got seven minutes right now. So yeah. perhaps that's for next week. And that was a good time for any final comments. If anyone has yeah. any final questions. I'll just go through the slides while people have questions though. Okay, uh, I think you need to reshare your screen because you got cut oh, off. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. So we didn't get to this. The next time I will start with this. So this is the old ways pyramid. And I like these pyramids um, because the American food pyramid, for instance, like we should be eating like half our plate in vegetables and it has like a quarter, you know? So the old ways pyramid is like how we used to eat and how our ancestors ate. So you see that there's vegetables, there's green leafy vegetables. We're doing a lot of exercising and movement. My grandfather swam up until late 80s. And the only reason they stopped is because we live on a hill in Jamaica and it's really hard to walk up the stairs, but he swam every day up until then. Um, here's vegetables and whole grains. So the um, phonio is an example, millet of different types of grains that you can, what? Sorghum, right? You have herbs, spices, and traditional sauces. You have fish, meat, milk, and then sweets very occasionally. And like in Africa, like the sweets that, you know, they're, you know like they're, there's not really that many sweets that people are known, known for. They're known for um, like puff puff, which is like a, a, a version of uh, kind of, it's like a slightly sweet version of a donut. And it might be um, rolled in honey or sugar, but there's not that, that there's not that many desserts that, well, yes, yeah, sesame seeds, yeah. Yeah, but it's on the healthier side. It's not like American, um, it's not like American highly processed, highly sugar things. All right, so here is the African and um, Middle Eastern pantry. You might want to do a screenshot of that. I gave you a smaller version in my notes. That is the Debbie Gen right here when it's like all made. Here is a black eyed pea salad from Senegal. And then here is Meza from North Africa, all different nice salads, vegetables. So some of the healthy dishes that you can have in African food are baked barracks. Those are like spanakopita, but they look like cigars, samosas. They have some samosas, some busas. Those are from East Africa. Um, which one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you have hand pies, salads, bunny chow is a curry that is put in bread, chicken yasa, which is chicken with onions, chickpea soup, cucumber and mango salad, Ethiopian red lentil stew, jollof rice, mafe, which is the, the um, peanut, and vegetable stew, tabbouleh, which is um, cracked wheat and vegetables. Tukumawiki, I talked about, which is um, East African, Kenyan, um, collard greens, vegetable tagine, which is a stew from North Africa. Um, here is a map. This website is called Taste Atlas, if you guys are into that kind of stuff. It's a great resource. And these see jollof rice here. Fufu is a starch that you usually eat with your hands and you use it to um, gather up your stews. So we talked about, I, I don't know if I didn't say bubba tea, but bubba tea is, a, is kind of the South African shepherd's pie. So there's all these different Dishes, you can look them up. Okay. Roast so I have two minutes left. Steak. That's interesting. Okay. I have two minutes left. So if there are any questions, you can always feel free to email me. I'm not going to send you the recipes to the end. So nadine.nelson at gmail.com. This is a great map that shows you all the different places that 
foods came from because you know a lot of people when we talk about prejudice it's so funny because you know if an Italian is prejudiced against someone from Latin America it's kind of crazy because they wouldn't have a tomato or a pepper if it wasn't from Latin America you know so this shows you all the different places that um you know trade routes that brought different seeds and different foods This is what you're going to want to see. So these have different examples of the spices. I'm just going to go through this real fast. I'm not going to, I'm just going to let you see it so you know. Using more vegetables. What does that look like? The dish that we just made, folks, hmm. right here. Yeah. So many ways to serve rice. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's like gunga peas, you got pilau, you got the red red. Kind of looks like Rice Krispie tri squares on the bottom. Yeah, they're used, um, they're made with millet. Oh, all right. Yeah. So the mashes, you see the greens made. Thinking of food as celebration. So you're not eating fried chicken every day. We didn't grow up eating fried chicken every day. We grew up eating fried chicken maybe once a month. You know, those are celebra celebration foods. And we're not saying, I, I would never say to anyone, I don't want to eat oxtail, but I don't want to be eating oxtail. I shouldn't eat oxtail every day. You know, <laughs> it's kind of fatty um, and not good for my heart if I eat it every day. If I eat it in moderation, it's fine, right? So putting fruit on our tables. And the whole idea about this is in a direct or indirect way is about food justice and food sovereignty and making sure that everyone feels valued for their culture and um, what they eat and making sure that people eat, um, people cook for themselves. All right, so that was the fast version. You'll have more than enough time to be able to peruse those 40 slides on your own at the end. And if there's not any more questions, we'll just do a motion to the food. So we can, I wanna show them the food, oh, just use that. Uh, try clicking exit down on the bottom there. Huh? Yeah, try I did. All right, Richard, we're just gonna try to show you the food. And then you know what? Well, we'll try and play some and we'll try and do some good pictures in this terrible light. Um, and we'll have, we'll put it in the packet so people will have it. And we'll do a better job of being able to try and do some food photography and stuff. But on my notes, those, oh, oh this is a cat. So this is um, roasted cabbage. And I, I probably roasted it a little too long, but I do like the way that it looks a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how I played it. Um, this is the photo. This is the ingredients. So we use some of this so it adds color. Just uh, collard greens, the butter, and it. it is a carrot. We're calling it and that was pretty. Well, that's a pretty bowl, the kind of flower shaped one. Yeah, I brought all different types of bowls, you guys. So I brought all different types of bowls and stuff for plating. We brought mats and all of that. <laughs> so you did come prepared. It's just that I know, I know, I, I appreciate, I want to say that I appreciate Rose because Rose is going to be with me for two hours, for four hours today. And um, I know that it's a lot. Uh, I try and push as much stuff as, as in as possible, and I know that I can't complete it all, but I can send it along to you for you to have. But um, uh, Nadine, I just want to cut out again. 
Oh, my video? My yep. what? Your video my, turned my off. My voice? Again. I can hear oh. you. Your video turned off. Oh, oh, oh. There we okay. go. Sorry. Um, oh. Yeah, all right. So I, I, I stuffed too much in and I know that, but I know that people are not going to necessarily be able to commit three hours which is more of what it would take to be able to do my presentation and go over all the different dishes, the pantry um, and stuff like that. But I will add to um, my PowerPoint so you guys can see like the most, like maybe I'll do like 10 items, like the suya, all that kind of stuff. So you know, like where to get it and what it looks like most specifically um, and stuff like that, all right? So do you want to see the rest of that? Is there, does anyone want to ask me anything who will be here next week? Or is there any, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyone have homework anyone? for Nadine? <laughs> Lord knows I have enough homework. <laughs> no questions? Looks well, like no. All right, well, thank you. It has been a, a pleasure. Um, I hope to see you um, next week. And it will be interesting for you guys to see the connections from one week to the next. Oh, from Jamaica, thank you. So, um, yeah. So, if you, like I said, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me. If you wanna see more about my work, you can always follow the library and then you can always um, follow me on Facebook. You don't have to be friends. You can just hit, hit follow. And I share a lot about my what I do on my personal um, Facebook page. Hey, Sheila, how are you? Um, and then also um, you can like my Global Local Gourmet page and then on Instagram too. But I put a lot of my stuff on my personal page. All right, thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. See you next week. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Happy hump day. <laughs>